So hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Living Light Naturally podcast. We're thrilled to have you here. And today I have with me Jessica Goss. Uh, she is combining a BSc in integrative health sciences. She's a board certified um, holistic nutritionist, a master herbalist. Um, that's her background. And she dives into all things health and beauty. She owns and I'm going to say it the English way, an herb and love story, a chemically conscious eco salon just outside Olympic National Park. So through nutrition mindset and healing herbs and botanicals, she helps women find and support their natural beauty from the inside out. So welcome, welcome to our podcast, Jessica. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So tell our listeners, what I know you've talked about Olympic National Park, but where in the U.S. is that? All right. When you're looking at the map of the United States, that little tiny corner up on Washington State, I am right over there. So I'm about two and a half hours west of Seattle. And we're on the Olympic Peninsula, so nice and isolated and quiet over here. Ah, are you surrounded by mountains? I am. I've got mountains to the south of me here, and I've got the water right here, and you can hit both of them in about 45 minutes. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. So today we're going to talk about how we can nourish our health and wellness and beauty. So I know that for a lot of women who listen to me, um, the beauty aspect is something I haven't talked about a whole lot, but it's something that's so important and that women... Um, in midlife are really are trying to do something about it. we want to gain our or regain a youthful look and so we're going to talk a bit about that so how did you get into this specific field uh, my background is beauty my mom and my aunt have both um, owned salons my entire life so I grew up in a salon. I went in as a nail tech originally out of high school and then moved into cosmetology. And then I got pregnant with my first daughter and started doing some research and finding that I could do this when I was not pregnant, but I couldn't do it when I was pregnant. And then really getting into what all of that was and why it was different. And then it was just a slippery slope where all of a sudden I had a major authenticity crisis, right? If I couldn't use these chemicals on myself, how could I use them on other people? And so that just led me down the road to where I am now. Mm. So we talk, talk about this, we see advertisements about this is a natural beauty product, which unless I research, I don't believe, but what are the most toxic products in health and beauty? So my, most of the things that we see in beauty that are big are going to be things that are going to affect your endocrine system, which causes disruption in your hormones. It can cause right. infertility and it can lead to thyroid dysfunction and all of these things that a lot of not just women, but women and men are dealing with because we have this constant barrage of chemicals. So a few of the ones that I always watch out for are acrylates, which are like a plastic. You see that a lot in hair. So anything that says mm. silicone, dimethicone, um, those are essentially plastics. And they usually sell them to people like me to make my hair less fuzzy. And then you heat style. And when you apply heat to a plastic, you essentially laminate the hair or the mm. skin. And what happens once you laminate that is you block the ability for natural detoxification of the body but also you block the ability for those cells to gain nourishment, water, moisture, like all of the things that we need to stay healthy are blocked through those acrylates, dimethicones, silicones. Um, another big one are phenols. So generally I tell people like if you see it say, I'm probably going to butcher it, but acyl phenol, it's A-L-K-Y-L. That's something that you want to be hesitant of. Um, parabens, which are gaining a lot more mm. knowledge. Most people will see on their products now, it will say paraben free. Um, formaldehyde is a big one, a very mm. easy one. If you were to make like one super fast change is anything that says fragrance or perfume, toss it because those are the biggest endocrine system disruptors in our environment. They're in our hair products, they're in our lotions, they're in our body wash. 
they're in um, our makeup, they're in our Febreze air fresheners in our homes. And so the more fragrance that you can eliminate from your life, the less chemical overload your body has to mm. process. Um, there's also phthalates. PPD is a big one in the hair industry. If you're someone that colors your hair, PPD is the number one pigment molecule that almost every company uses. Mm. And so the majority of people that have allergies to hair color that make you itch or get scabs or some of those things that a lot of people experience, it's from PPD. Um, another big one is Quat 15. And so those are some of the big ones I look out for. I also love to give people resources. So the two that I use the most are ewg.org mm -hmm. and they have their skin deep system. Amazing. It will give you like a green to red in terms of risk. And it'll tell you what you're at risk for, whether that's endocrine system disruption or um, carcinogenic ingredients. And then you can really make the decision on what feels like a worthy risk for your product. Uh, the other one is safecosmetics.org, and they've got a really great printable list of the top 20 toxic ingredients to watch out for. So that's an easy one to put on your phone wallpaper or take with you to the store. So those are great resources as well. Awesome. Um, yeah, you mentioned hair color, and I remember um, oh, quite a few years ago, having a certain color put on my hair and that happened to me with the scabs and mm -hmm. so of course my stylist was like we can't use this again on you and um it was more of a permanent she doesn't use a permanent color on my hair mm -hmm. anymore because of that reason and we don't often think about things like that as um being something else toxic that we're putting on there yeah so, yeah, ewg.org is somewhere I go a lot for information on healthy eating. I have not thought about looking in there for beauty products, but that's a great resource. So I will definitely put that in the show notes for people. Yeah. So another thing I want to ask you is because there is so much information out there and so much that people are doing, why is it that we're reaching for the band-aids to make us look youth, uh, youthful again and well-rested? This is my favorite question. Um, I think it's a great question. It's something that I interact with on the daily, both in salon and as a health coach. And so when I'm helping people navigate their health goals, there's two parts to this, and one of them we'll touch on something that I think we'll talk about a little later. But the first one is the reason we're looking for band-aids to look well-rested is because we're not well-rested. Mm. We live in a society that is constant bombardment of notifications through you know, email and text and phone, and we've got news that's heavy on our hearts in a worldwide capacity that we haven't seen before. Um, we have poor nutrition as a whole. We have poor digestion. Both of those things are critical to cellular turnover. Uh, we're chronically dehydrated and most of us have a lack of sleep. And so all of those things together mean that our body is trying to process more junk with less resources, less rest, less water to detoxify. And essentially, we're surrounding ourselves in free radicals, which our body is very capable of taking care of if we give it the time and space to do so. Uh, and so I know that there are some natural alternatives. So give us some of the, the herbs or the foods that we, we can include yes. in our daily routine to get that fresh, healthy glow. Yeah. So uh, one of my favorite lines to give people is I'm an herbalist, but I'm a nutritionist. And so herbs are food and food is medicine. So the more herbs you can incorporate into your diet, that's going to be the most sustainable way to get this constant medicine that we're meant to have. We're meant to eat plants. Almost every plant by default is antimicrobial. It's antifungal. It's free radical fighting. A lot of them are anti-tumorigenic. Um, so the more plants you can incorporate into your life, I have a list here. Mm -hmm. So dandelion root is a great one. You can um, use that in a tea. 
the favorite way that I have, because honestly, I don't really love the taste. And most people find that to be a little bit of a, um, a stopping point. The other point is like, most of us don't have time to run out to our yard and dig up the dandelion root and then chop it up and let it dry. And then, you know, put it into a usable form. And so there's a lot of products out there that are essentially like an instant coffee format. And so it's dried dandelion root, and you can add that to your coffee, your tea, whatever your normal routine is. It's just that little extra nutrient boost. Dandelion's great for supporting the liver and helping clear toxins. So all that stuff we're putting on and in our body, it helps our body to get rid of them too. Um, the next one is rose hip. And I love rose hip, both internal and external. You can use it in a tea and it has this wonderful, fresh tart flavor. It goes great with citrus or lemon balm. Um, you can also use it externally. Rose hip is a great one in terms of oils and beauty products that have rose hip in them because the vitamin C content is so high. Um, and then in terms of some external, just easy that are usually quick to find herbs are chamomile calendula, and eyebright, and all of those are great topically applied to the skin. Um, you can do all of them either infused in a carrier oil like sweet almond or uh, grapeseed oil, whatever you have, and let that sit in there. Um, I think the fastest way is to do a small container and place it like in a very low heat oven for 45 minutes or so, and then remove it, let it cool, and then that'll be good for probably up to two weeks, a little longer if you slip some vitamin E oil in there. But those are great for repairing the skin itself. Um, eye bright and chamomile specifically, you can make like you would be making a tea to drink, but instead you just use it as a compress on the face. And both of those are really good for brightening and kind of relaxing, removing some of the stress that we're putting on our body all the time. Um, in terms of foods to include, every nutritionist, right? Fresh, leafy, dark green vegetables. They're amazing for all the things and they're really good for our skin as well. Uh, berries of all kind, they have polyphenols, which are non-toxic phenols and they help um, our body to just, with our cellular regeneration, fighting those free radicals. Uh, things that are high in beta carotene, like sweet potato or carrots. And then the biggest one that I encounter with women of all ages is healthy fats nuts, mm. seeds, avocados. We've been taught for so long to avoid fat and our skin and hair need fat. Our hormones need fat. And without those, we can't do any of those healthy things we're supposed to do. So you mentioned um, adding vitamin E and then you mentioned in something else, vitamin C. Is there a good vitamin C out there that we can purchase to put on our skin? Um, you know, it really depends on what you're using it for. So there's going to be varying amounts. And so in terms of like a topical all the time, I really love the company Golden Hour. And um, through my website, you can find them. Um, there's a shop button on there. And that company uses a large amount of botanical ingredients. And they have some really great vitamin C products. Mm. So that would probably be the one I know the best. And what would we use as we age instead of running out for the Botox and the other stuff? What is good for helping with the, the lines and the, the wrinkles that seem to just creep on us? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say a combination of lifestyle adjustments. So the number one thing that helps with that with women I work with are setting boundaries for ourselves <laughs> about our sleep, about how much time we're going to spend uh, drinking water or maybe taking ourselves to a steam room. All of those things are very replenishing. Um, moisturizing regularly is key and um, being aware of sun. And I, being in the Northwest here, I'm a big lover of the sun because we don't see it all that much. Yeah. And so yeah. there's this fine line and sunscreens are one of those very high toxicity things. So finding something that keeps you from having excessive sun damage while still minimizing your toxic load and allowing your body to absorb some of that sunlight because we need it. We, we do. So I would say hats, shade. I always go for those first. Um, and then just... There's a lot of new research coming out in terms of like 
facial exercises, lymphatic massage, gua sha techniques, and all of those can help re-plump our skin and kind of fight against that premature aging. And then as we move into actual aging, it just helps us to age gracefully. Yeah, that's a very important thing. Um, I would say if I'm thinking about from the inside out, that hydration is probably number one on my list. Make, that can make a huge difference. So how can we um, adjust or rewrite, as I know you put it, a toxic beauty culture? Yeah, that really is where that second part of the previous question comes in is I help women every day to realize that they're chasing an unattainable dream. And so we really look at like, where is this coming from? Well, it's from the media because you never see women over 40 in anything. You might have a 65 year old male counterpart, but women are not shown under 40. Um, I really think the, uh, the Sports Illustrated cover <laughs> that recently <laughs> made so much stir it was a really good like there was this school of thought that was like oh my gosh this is amazing and she's so beautiful and well she doesn't look real and the fact that that's what we're idolizing that 70 something should look like is unrealistic and it's unfair so i really think that focusing on natural beauty and health as beauty if you are in your 50s, 60s, 70s, and you're doing yoga and you're walking and you're gardening out in the sunshine you are naturally radiant much more than someone that is filling their body full of plastic fillers. And so that's really where I think the work needs to be done. And it's really finding those people that agree and lift you up and letting those others fall aside so that you're not chasing something that ultimately costs your longevity and your health. So I, I know where you're coming from. I've often looked at the advertisements on tv and they're showing these wrinkle creams and they usually are women that uh well they may be a bit older but for example brooke shields i know has been on some and i know that she's amazing because she doesn't look her age but don't know also what she's done to her face but mostly women are in their 40s might find some early 50s and i always look and think well, that's all well and good, but what happens when you get older than that? And do you really want to run out and get some of those wrinkle creams that they're advertising anyway that are probably high in the toxicity area? So what kind of moisturizers should we be using as we age? So as we're aging, we really want to rebuild that lipid layer on the skin. And so you're going to want to go for natural fats, castor oil, grapeseed oil, mango butter is a really nice one. Um, keeping moisture on the skin is really important. And I mean, we feel that, you know, from head to toe, our hair gets dry as we age and our skin gets dry. And so having a regular ritual where you are taking care of your body and you're replenishing those moisture areas, you're getting rid of any di dry skin and um, dry brushing can be really helpful mm. because it moves lymphatic drainage through the body and it brings blood flow to the skin, which again, supports those healthy cell turnovers, which is what starts to slow as we age. Well, what about some of those, and I know I can't pronounce some of them, but like the jade rollers that you see advertised mm -hmm. for the face now, do they help with the lymphatic drainage? Yeah. So again, that's a similar idea and it's, you know, I'm a big believer in intention and energy. And so number one, you're setting that intention and energy, right? You're bringing that life force energy to what you're working on, which I think is huge in and of itself. But yes, the, anything that stimulates, it's the same thing with hair growth. You know, you want to stimulate the scalp, you want to get blood flow moving, and so all of those things that help to move toxins and bring blood flow to the surface. Mm -hmm. So I know that, and I'll, I'll drop it in the show notes, you've got some of your favorite clean body products that you um, show. And I think that you've also got some content on your website that would be very helpful for people. So are you specifically on your website gearing it to people as they age or do you do it for all ages? 
So I work with all ages and my website is really set up to um, meet my dichotomy of clients. I have beauty clients and I have health clients and there's information on both sides. Um, I always joke that I'm the hairdresser. Nobody wants to come see because they're like, can you sell me something to make my hair grow? And I'm like, well, I can, but you need to sleep and you need to eat better and your digestion is terrible. So you're actually malnourished. And so I really, I try to hit both sides of those because they're so intertwined. Um, on the beauty page, there is a, I believe it's a shop Owe. Owe is the main hair company that I recommend. Uh, their products are very clean. They're actually out of Italy and they are very botanically infused. So shampoos have things like licorice root and mm. like soothing anti-inflammatory. They've got some really great hair regrowth products that again, stimulate that blood flow to the scalp. Um, golden hour is also available through there. And that is the skincare company that I like. Um, and really that whole company is that's where I obtain all my beauty products. And I feel pretty good about almost everything they sell. Um, there's always, you know, that continuum. I would definitely go for the OA and the golden hour. There's a company called My Veg that's also out of Italy. They've got some amazing things coming out in terms of like regenerative hair masks and just mm -hmm. botanically infused beauty as opposed to uh, petroleum based chemical overload. Mm -hmm. And where is the best place for people to find you? Uh, probably the easiest is my website which is an herb and love story.com. Cause I'm here in the U S so yeah. I have to have that N on there. Yeah. Um, uh, aside from that, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at an urban love story. And do you have any, um, parting words or last minute tips that you could give to our ladies or gentlemen, if they're listening to. Yeah, it would be that as we age, to try to quiet the media and remember that like a lot of our beauty comes from our experience and the wrinkles we get from learning hard lessons and the stretch marks we get from creating our families and that these things that we're told are so unlovable are literally they're the love that create our life. And mm -hmm. so when you start to absorb that and really resonate with that, your natural vitality shows regardless of age. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of your information today. Um, I know it's a struggle as we age. We're kind of fighting what we see out there and the knowledge that we really should have regarding our own health and vitality. So I appreciate your input. Thank you. It was fun being here. And I also want to remind our women out there since I know we've talked a little about some of the estrogen disruptors or the hormone disruptors that I do offer a free call. And if you're interested, check out the show notes and I would love to chat with you and help you reach that um, balance and vitality we've talked about today. Thank you so much, Jessica. It's been fun. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. You have been listening to the Living Life Naturally podcast, where we're on a mission to inform, inspire, and encourage women to live their best life confidently, joyfully, and freely from what's been holding them back. For show notes and free resources, visit holistic-healthandwellness.com. And I'd be delighted if you'd follow us on socials to connect further. If you enjoyed this show, why not share it with your friends? If you found good value, chances are they will too. And of course, a five-star review on iTunes is always greatly appreciated as much as I appreciate you listening. So until next time, live life naturally and joyfully.